Throughout wrestling's history, we've seen many different gimmicks, but there is one that stands head and shoulders above the rest. While most top stars played extensions of their real-life selves, Undertaker played the mythical Deadman, a persona that acted as the cornerstone of WWE for 30 years. During that time, we saw Taker portray a version of himself as well. It's what helped give the Phenom such incredible longevity. For this video, we're going to break down and showcase the very best of the Deadman, from his personas, to the entrance, to WrestleMania, and everything else in between. Today, we look at what made The Undertaker the greatest character in wrestling history. The Undertaker character gripped us right from his very first appearance. We could feel his presence as he entered, and it was this breathtaking entrance that became a focal point of Taker's presentation. The slow walk accompanied by Jim Johnston's famous music was just bone chilling. Look at the size of that hammock! Check out them drumsticks, baby! Eight feet tall, 460 pounds, and the dead man walks through that entrance. It is chilling. Undertaker is one of the greatest competitors of all time. I don't know how many times I have had the privilege of sitting at ringside to witness this entrance. I still get chills that run up and down my spine. No matter the era or setting, Taker's entrance commanded our attention. He didn't just feel larger than life, he felt otherworldly. This was the living, breathing, undead phenom in all his glory. <laughs> In kayfabe, you can imagine how unsettling and intimidating the entrance was for the opponent. Psychologically, they could lose the match before it even begins, since they have had a lot of time to think and observe the figure they see before them. He's gonna drop in and beat somebody up! Will forever be in the World Wrestling Federation. No, no. Book is still not running cold. He's moving to the ring, but he's not... He's not walking, it's... I don't think, anyway. The Undertaker doesn't do ordinary entrances, something that became even more apparent after he transitioned to the biker, driving his motorcycle to the ring with the music from Kid Rock and Limp Biscuit that fit perfectly. The tone of his entrance, while different to before, still hit strong. Instead of making people rest in peace, the Phenom was now making his opponents famous. It was a new character, but ultimately drew the same results for the person standing across from Taker. <laughs> The entrance was one way The Undertaker built Mystique, something we saw more of whenever the dead man decided to skip coming down the ramp altogether and instead appearing out of the darkness. You could either see Taker coming with the long walk or hear the gong and next thing you know, he's behind you. This contrast made the character all the more mysterious and superhuman-like, especially since the blackout entrance was traditionally reserved only for the Lord of Darkness. It was almost like he had psychokinetic powers, but no matter how Undertaker entered, when the gong went off, the crowd became unglued. In Rey Mysterio's career here. Another historically exclusive weapon of Taker's was his supernatural abilities. This epitomized the dead man's persona. Even though we saw what he was capable of in and out of the ring, you never truly knew what he could do next. The feed arm was one of the few in wrestling that could get away with pulling stuff like this off, a testament to how highly regarded the character was. What I think he's just done. Waits for no one. Enjoying the ride, Randy. Oh. Holy 
We touched on the fear that Edman struck in his opponent, but this also extended to the referees. The officials were visibly afraid of Taker, even more so than the wrestlers. And unfortunately for him, top of that infernal match again. I mean, you can't have a game plan. Oh, oh, an edge with the Undertaker. I'm right drop to his whoa, whoa. Brian Hedner. <laughs> Probably the smartest thing he'll do tonight. No. Commentating. He shortened my career, oh, oh, and it oh, was not personal. Humbling Kane. Oh, look out. Referee running for his life. And who could blame it? Oh, what is the Undertaker? Taker pretty much never broke character during his run. His persona was heavily protected, a trope that became less and less common in other wrestlers as Taker's career continued. It's what allowed the Phenom to become such a special character. Undertaker's mystique and presence also extends to real life in the form of respect and admiration from his peers, since Taker is arguably the most respected wrestler of all time and set an example as the locker room leader for most of his career. A key strength of the Undertaker's character was his ability to drop in and out when the time was right, be it due to injuries or by having a lighter schedule Taker is renowned for his memorable returns. The WWE was always a better place when he was around. This, coupled with the excitement to see the dead man back in action, resulted in numerous spectacular moments. And oh my goodness! Oh, look at that! Wow! Oh, lightning bolt! Is this it on Mars? It is! Whoa! Undertaker! It's the Undertaker! Holy! Oh. oh my god! In all cover, oh my gosh, feel the disdain. Oh my god, the dead man. What coast here? No, are you kidding me? The Undertaker is a type of character that doesn't need to say much. It meant when Taker spoke, we took note, especially because when he did, his delivery and words were spine tingling, a skill the dead man maintained for his entire career. There will be no resting in peace. There is no peace in the Undertaker's mortuary. Merry Christmas, Yokozuna. Ho, ho, ho. I don't make mistakes. I bury them. I must now be your judge, your jury, and your executioner. I hate everyone. You need to watch your ass. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I taught you everything you know about evil, but I didn't teach you everything I know. I'm back. Taking souls and digging holes. While known for his ominous promos, the Phenom displayed a different side to his mic work as the American badass and big evil. Here, the dead man was able to roast and tear others down in a way that he wasn't able to do previously. It was the Attitude Era facelift needed to bring the character into the new millennium, as he played a character more true to his real life self. Although I don't dress like Satan anymore, I'm still down with the devil, and I will go medieval on your ass. You get the pleasure of paying me lots of money to kick your stank ass. Hey! It's true. What? What? She is a sleazy tramp. Oh, boy! Man. Why don't you say what if you like to sleep with your own sister? Hey! And there ain't a damn thing you can do about it, cue ball. Cue ball! There ain't but one kind of pie Kane and I both eat. A key feature of Undertaker's promos were his catchphrases. He sent out warnings to opponents and told them whose ring it is. Iconic reminders that enhance Taker's haunting aura. Your mouth writing checks, your ass can't cash. Because tonight, your mouth has wrote a check your ass can't cash. Your mouth writing checks, your ass can't cash. And if you try me, I'll make you famous. If you feel froggy, then jump. But if they try me, I will make them famous. Try me. I'll make you famous. That ring, it's my yard. And I'm the big dog that runs that yard. You're 
in my yard, and I'm the big dog that runs that yard. That's my yard out there, and I'm the big dog that runs that yard. Oh! When Daddy wakes up, tell him the Undertaker took back his yard. That road ends in my yard. For them, it will be a graveyard. What would you like to hear? Rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. 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 Thank you very much, Another way the Phenom built ambiance was through his many taunts. Some hyped us up for moves, others sent chills down our spines. The eye roll that just happened in a match. And everybody was like, what the hell was that? It's legit scary. I can't stress that enough. Look at that, Monsoon. He has no eyeballs. The Undertaker had just three oh, words. Oh, man. About palsy. Today, he oh. represents... One thing that all the taunts shared in common was symbolism. Whether they were setting up a move. The hand held high can only mean one thing. The number of people have ever kicked out from a choke slam from The Undertaker. Well, this may be what The Undertaker has to do. The damage still done. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. We saw it drop. 15 feet and oh, still no. beat Mr. Kennedy. Look at this. Strong and better make himself scarce if he knows what's good for him. Oh! This, Michael, say it. This is Vintage Undertaker, right? Representing a different incarnation of the dead man's persona. Just take him out of here. That's right where he belongs, huh? All right, let's go. Ow! Come on. Arrest him! All right, let's go. Let's go. Come on. No, you go! No. If they accompany an iconic catchphrase or entrance, Rest in peace. Rest in peace. All spelled impending doom for his opponents. And now somehow we're going to put the Undertaker away. Oh!
away. He got Diesel! Hey man! Jericho has to go for a cover here. Oh, this trio in a ring. Ah! Wait, 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 just a minute. And Michaels can't believe it. Ah! Oh, man. <laughs> Not as creepy as that. From the top and all. Awesome. Oh, my God. Hey, eventually it's going to work against me. Look at this. Here we go. Hello. We've spoken about his legendary character, but we would be remiss not to mention the Deadman's tremendous ability between the ropes. His unique in-ring style helped create some incredible matches. Despite Taker's large height and weight, he had insane athleticism. There were times he would jump in the air or from the top rope. Up to the top rope in! No! Oh, no! Spinning into the Undertaker! Hey, look out! However, one of Taker's greatest moves was his trademark dive to the outside. It was a thing of beauty, but used sparringly, which made it all the more of a threat when we got to see it. The Phenom was willing to put it all out on the line to entertain the fans. The Phenom's matches were characterized by his signature offense. He had his go-to spots and a host of finishing moves that could win him the match. Setting him up for Sting, guys. I've never seen anything like it. And there's the Phenom. So coming off to Ruffin. Given the type of character Taker was, the company could afford to take risks with him creatively that wouldn't be possible with most others. As a result, we saw a lot of unique match types that the dead man had specialized in, starting with the casket match that acted as a precursor to the buried alive match. The coffin. Oh, Kamala being sealed. His fate sealed here by the Undertaker. Now in a boot. Oh, wait a minute. Get those in a cabin. Oh, my God. And a
Other match types the Phenom innovated or heavily featured in included the last ride match. Not on the roof of the hurt. and Hell in a Cell, with a cell in particular being a match the dead man has thrived in better than anyone else. The Undertaker saved many of his greatest matches for the grandest stage, on the way to creating a legendary WrestleMania unbeaten streak that will likely never be replicated. And while Taker's early Mania bouts weren't overly memorable, they gradually built and built to the point where the streak matches became a main feature of WrestleMania. The streak became its own phenomenon, and the storylines of wrestlers attempting to break it helped define The Undertaker's legacy. The iconic series with Shawn Michaels and Triple H were not only some of the best matches of all time, but collectively the saga is one of the greatest stories ever told in wrestling. The Undertaker was the mythical final boss that Sean, Hunter and so many men tried to defeat on the grandest stage but failed. Michaels and Triple H were the men Taker already had a storied history with prior to the four-match series at WrestleMania. Taker and Sean had reignited their rivalry during consecutive Royal Rumble matches, and after these encounters, it only made sense for the two to do battle on the show of shows. <laughs> The game had featured in the background throughout this storyline, before himself challenging Taker at WrestleMania after the Phenom retired HBK. Because you know, Sean was always better than you. You remember when I said Sean is better than you? He is. It made for a thrilling story, the type of which the dead man's career was chalk full of. Perhaps the most notable one was the introduction of Undertaker's brother, Kane. It was a rivalry that ran directly through Taker's first feud with Sean. Building to the match at WrestleMania 14, it was a story that continued to be told years down the line. Both were powerful on their own, all with Paul Bearer by their side, but together as the Brothers of Destruction, they seemed unstoppable. Although given their history, it was usually only a matter of time before they fought each other once again. Taker also starred in some of the Attitude Era's most famous storylines. His run-ins with the McMahons was bookended with a feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin. It led to exceptional television that held us on the edge of our seats, which built to pay-per-views that we couldn't wait to see. The Undertaker's run as ruler of the ministry made him a cult-like religious figure that added more layers to his character. The shift to an edgier product allowed Taker's persona to push the envelope. 
Oh my. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> this has to be because Christian was the one who told Shamrock where Stephanie McMahon was being held last week. Where to, Stephanie? <laughs> Lift into his future for this Sunday. Domination. Look at this. This continued during the Ruthless Aggression era, such as during the personal blood feud with Brock Lesnar. This was a great storyline that showcased Taker's ability to elevate others, since Lesnar was a made man in WWE following the feud, not just because of the in-ring, but also because it showed how brutal Brock could be as a character. Life's a bitch. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god. Okay, thank you. We also can't forget the Phenom's work with Randy Orton, Kurt Angle, Edge and Batista from 2005 on and especially during 2007 and 2008. Taker was having one of the best runs of his career. He never looked better physically, meanwhile in the ring he was firing on all cylinders. Buckle up Teddy. This only continued as he took up a more part-time schedule, only showing up a few times in a year, but still being at the top of his game. That was until the Deadman's fame WrestleMania streak ended in 2014. A third and four to the Undertaker! Hugs the leg! The streak is over! After that, the Phenom continued to appear, chasing the Dragon in an attempt to have a match that he was happy to end his career on. It took Taker returning as the Biker and competing in the critically acclaimed Boneyard match with AJ Styles for the man Mark Calloway to finally have closure and ride off into the night, allowing the Undertaker's wrestling career to rest in peace. Cowboy really rides away. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar videos on where we debate what made both The Rock and Stone Cold the most popular wrestlers of all time. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.